Okay. So what, what did send it after you? What okay, we are now on Vayikra. Last week we did Bhattasriya. Today we do the Torah. Yes, sir. So, ah, the first question he asks is, what is the reason that the one who is, gets purified from Sarat brings sacrifices? What is their understanding? Next one is, the hand of God that sends Sarat through a miracle. I don't know what that is. Um, 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 um. Oh, there's not much this week. No. <laughs> another one is the the reason for the uncleanliness of a zav, a person who has a mission and his kovanot. And uh, the, the bad spirit that uh, dwells in the house of the of the uh, one who is afflicted with Mitzorah and the houses that become afflicted with Tzarahat. The bad spirit, say? The bad spirit. I don't know. You know what, maybe... No, should, no, it's know, referring to a Shedim or something. Maybe it doesn't seem very no. You know what maybe we should do is something to do with Pesach. Hmm. What do you think about that? Evening. Um, for example, for example, uh, I love for example uh, 14.2 and 14.4. Which one is that? Uh, this is the, it shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be He talks about, about the, the uh, Sarat that Hashem sends yes. to a niece. And uh, for niece. Lamed Dalet. You're talking about uh, 14.34. No, I'm talking about 14.2, the, the beginning, and uh, 14.4, like uh, a living, a living uh, Sipor, you know, that's weird because we believe that the Sipor is clean, but at a certain time become unclean, you know, that's why I'm trying to understand, I was commencing to read it. You, are, you already started it? Yeah, I started I'm, I'm, I'm ready to try. I'm ready to try that. You, uh, Pinky, you with that? No, yeah. Talking about uh, Yib Dalad. Yib Dalad, Dalad. Are we in the room where you're going to be? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry for, for No, no, no problem. Yib Dalad, Dalad. Taking some water from here. This is the procedure of the Mitzora who is going to be purified, and he comes to the Kohen. The Kohen goes out to the outside of the camp. Now, that itself sounds like a contradiction, no? Why? It says the man should be brought to the Kohen, and then it says the Kohen should go out to, outside of the camp. Yeah. Well, by the first sentence, you might think that the man is brought to the Kohen who is not going out of the camp. In the mm -hmm. second sentence, it seems that he's going out. Yeah. So in the first Pasuk, Ramban says, he doesn't ever become purified. Yeah, the Shevel wants to indicate that this sounds like the Ramban is trying to deal with this contradiction. Mm -hmm. In the one case, it says that he's going to be brought to the Kohen. In the other place, it says that the Kohen goes out to him. Vihuva means that he's, he requires him, not that he is going to. Well, that's a little bit forced. You know? If was a katu. Third line. Third line. Third line. Okay, now that's what the Pasuk Vehuva means. 
שאם ירצה להיטהר, הוא מוכרח לכהן, he requires him, he needs him. ואחר כך, and then, the Torah then describes how it's to be done, and that is פירש. The Torah explains, שייצא הכהן אליו. It doesn't sound like much of an answer, I mean, okay, okay. He requires the claim because he cannot become Tahor except by his decree. Doesn't sound like a very good way of answering the seeming contradiction. He's taking the Huva as not literal, right? He will be brought to the Kohen when the Kohen goes out to him. Okay, and but there's a Midrash that says, meaning that he shouldn't wait. Meaning what? איך אמר שלא יישאר, שלא יצדק זה הלשון על מה שיש בידו. אבל בקורבן שהוא על פי הכהן, לא יצדק לומר שלא יישאר. וזהו שאמר רבינו, אם כן יאמר כי ביום שיטהר, יתרפא מנהיגו, יובא אל כוחו על הכהן. Well, 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 well. All right, I, I don't know that we have to go into this one, right? Not as critical. Sounds like he, the Ramban believes, according to the one Medrash, that once he becomes healed of his Sarat, he should proceed to become Tahor right away. He shouldn't just sit around and say, well, maybe next week. When I get around to it, when, uh, when everybody has time, in the meantime, I don't mind being out here outside of the camp. Sounds like, according to the Medrash, the Huvayal HaKohen means he should, cook, he should proceed without waiting. Mm-hmm. אם כן, יאמר כי ביום שיתאר יתרפא, that's what the Torah says, right? וזאת תורת הצרה, תהיה תורת המצור ביום טהרתו, on the day up. The day it happens. The same day it happens, he should proceed. I'm thinking that the refuah is identical with the tahara. No. That's the problem. The Kohen has to declare it. That's what the Torah then describes. In other words, he should proceed, the, the, the man who's out there should promote and get into the procedure of getting decreed to the Hor as soon as he is healed. And not to wait. That's what Huva means. He's healed by some other means? Correct. What do you mean by naturally? He looks at his arm and he says, oh. Right. Oh, it's well, well not, not, not naturally, but not by the coin. The coin has not declared it yet. The coin is in the camp. He's sitting out well, here in, the, the, in, uh, the in Rockland County. And he, okay, and he okay, says, okay, I am okay, I am okay, healed. Okay. I am healed. What is the coin? What is the coin's role? Function? Yeah. Is it, is it to declare her? He, he has to declare it. That's what he says. In other words, he may be physically clean already. Right. Yes. When he, just when like he when a person who is a tzara, well, let me finish. Just like when a person becomes a tzara, a mitzora, he is not a mitzora until the Kohen says, "This is a nega tamehu." It has to be by declaration. It's not so a, it's the not declaration is the healing of the, of the guy. The, the declaration is the Kohen saying so. But that's the, that's the way that the, this guy got cleaned. No, no, no. Physical clean, becoming clean physically no. No, and no. becoming tahor. And then that one... And yes, Saras, he has Saras on his nose, he sees it, but he's not tummy yet. Mm-hmm. Until the Kohen comes and says, yes, that's a Sarat, he's tummy. Mm-hmm. It's a declaration, it's a psak. Mm-hmm. And when it goes away, he says, oh, I'm clean now, but he's not clean until the Kohen comes to him and says, that mm-hmm. is Tahor. He is, he is, he is healed, he but is he's not clean. He's not he Tahor. He is near past. He is healed, but he is not Tahor. And he's healed through Mishamayim. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, well, that's, means that's, the that's if you believe, of course, if you believe that Sarat comes mina shamayim at all times, that it's a miraculous disease to begin with, so the healing is also miraculous if you like. Exactly, yeah. Obviously, if I have a strep throat and then I am healed, there it's a matter of interpretation what is actually happening. Is it the Shemayim that has healed me or is it my immune system that has fought off the strep throat? But in this case, if you want to, we will, we will for the moment, agree that Sarat is different from other diseases, right? right? From other afflictions. Right. That it is a miraculous affliction. And the affliction but what, if, what happened if the, or, this we, guy we, is... We learned, we learned the Ramban. One of them is Lashon Hara, the other one was the miraculous sign that God wants to show the person and every person when he deviates a little bit from God because he is really with them and Shoreh when he's dwelling with them and therefore they are perfect. And as soon as they, not just Lashon Hara, as soon as they steal or uh, think badly or uh, are angry at their wives, Hashem will depart from them, and the sign of his departing from them is getting is his being in sorrow. We read it in the Ramban. That's his. That's his opinion, right? Yeah. And he also quoted the fact that it's uh, lashon hara. It's also a lot of midrashim. He says there are a lot of opinions about it, right? But he said that tzorat is a miraculous disease. Correct. So the, for the, in that case, you need a ceremonial procedure procedure to make him tamei. You need a ceremonial procedure to make him tahor. He does not become Tahor just because he does, healed from the spot. Does not matter that he, he sees for himself that he's clean. He needs to go. Nor to does it matter if he sees that himself. Maybe that he's, he's living uh, 20 kilometers away. He so needs a coin. Coin has to go coin. out. The coin has to go out there and uh, find him. And he has to okay. come and say. So okay, that's what he's saying that the coin go think? out to, to him. Okay. To declare. Oh, so right. if he goes to China, he, he can't be he can't be Torah until he comes back to the Kohen, or the Kohen goes out in. Well, yeah. Is there a requirement? I, I don't know, but if he if he's required to leave the Machane, mm -hmm. yeah. that doesn't mean he can't go farther than the Machane. I mean, what happened in Eretz Yisrael? Right? The Ramban says in Eretz Yisrael that there are Torah mitzrayim. Yes. Right? So where do they go? Nowadays, Outside of nowadays? the No, no. In yeah. his day, in the days after Yehoshua, they come into the to the land of Israel, and it's and it's distributed among the tribes, yeah. right? So a Torah in any place has to leave the dwelling place and of where he lives, of his of his town, I say. Uh, a town. He's living in. A place. Yerushalayim is in the middle of, or, or Haifa is in the middle of uh, Dan. So he has to leave Haifa into the fields, into the whatever. You remember the story of the Haftarah? They were at Mitzrayim, who were outside the walls of the city. What city was that? I don't know. Hebron? Uh, Kiryat Arba? Where, where, who, was, who was there? The king was living there, and they went out of the wall. That's where they were sitting, waiting to be let back in when they would become purified. Because they have no way to, to exist. I mean, they have no society. They have no... But let's say if I became a Tzamezora, Chas mm -hmm. Shalom, right? And I took with me my million dollars bank account with a Swiss account in Switzerland. Once I leave my town, can't I go to take a trip to uh, Thailand or to New Zealand and uh, hike around in the woods until I am clean? I mean, does anybody say I have to sit? Outside the wall? I don't know. So some that's Orion might actually be happy. Okay, I'm going. See you later. Go on vacation. Anyhow, I don't think so. But anyway, so... And so on. That's true. When they become clean, then they shall proceed right away to do this. For example... Uh, a woman who is menstrually unclean, for example. Let's say she decided, you know, okay, it's over now, but I don't feel like going to the Mikkel. It's okay with me. I don't mind staying just the way I am. It, he would suggest here, the Zav and the Zava, he says the same thing. It, he would suggest from this Sukim that Behuvai la Kohen, or to, 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 the Torah is trying to give a message that a person should 
exert himself to become Tahor when he is able to become Tahor. Mm -hmm. Not to just delay and forget about it because, because it interferes with his normal holiness of life, right? He can't go to the Beit HaMikdash, he can't put, he can get involved in certain uh, korbanot, he can't uh, give truma and maser, he can't, you know, she can't live with her husband in a normal fashion, so it's not appropriate to say, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it's over, it's over and you should continue to proceed. Okay, so that's one. Now, the, 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 so the Kohen does what? The Kohen then sees, now that would sound like he has to declare it. So he commands the Kohen. Now what does that mean? He takes it for him? Yeah. means the Kohen, right? That's the subject of the verb. Vilakach is the Kohen. The Kohen commands and he takes for the one who is going to be cleansed two birds. Chayoto wrote, Ve'etzer is Ushnitolat, Ve'ezov. Does that mean this is the Kohen's obligation to take it for him? Uh, I think that's true. That's true, huh? Well, the Kohen, well, I guess I don't know if the Kohen pays for it, but he uses, he probably uses the property of Hektesh. Uh, you think? Who's that property of Hektesh? Where does he take it from? I don't know. Where does he take it from? Uh, from the store? And he, the Kohen, would have to pay for it? What do you mean? Uh, Do you think the Vitaher actually pays for it, but he asks the Kohen to buy it for him? I'm know. not sure. It's not explained here. Yeah. All right. I think it means the Kohen should... Take it, should, should, uh, let's, uh, take it for him. Yeah, I think so. That's what it sounds so like. My, to my question is, what's the transaction? I mean, that's all. It is. Is, the, uh, um, maybe, is maybe. there a bill to be paid? Uh, hmm. Okay, we'll see. So now, what's going on in pasuk? Oh, that's that's pasuk dalad, right? Tziparim chayot, living. It usually means tehorot. To who wrote. And so he's going to explain. Ramban wants to say that from Chayot, Siporim is the bird. Chayot means living. So he says, Pratla Trefot. Trefot means a bird that is, um, has received some kind of a injury or a defect from which it will die. Mm -hmm. Right? A hole in the halan, a hole in the heart, a uh, missing organ, some, yeah, some kind I, of a some kind I of a, a fatal, a fatal, a, a fatal defect. But die in the meantime. Not right now. Long? Not I don't know. Within within, it, it, this within is a big discussion in in Hulen about what kind of a tray for how long is long. Some people say a year. Some people say a month. I don't know. A period of time. This is fatal. It's going to lead to the death. Right. So I. Whatever it is, right? That's Chayot. Mm -hmm. Tehorot. What does Tehorot mean? Prat le'ov tamay. For example, there are some birds that you cannot eat, right? That are called unclean. Yes. So you have to take bird which is permitted to eat. Eagle. Like, like for example, an eagle. You cannot eat an eagle, but you can eat a pigeon, right? Mm -hmm. So, prat le'ov tamay. Lefi shehanigat. What? A yona. Okay. לפי שה נגאים באים על לשון הרע שהוא מעשי פתית לפי כך הוצרכו בתהרתו ציפורים שמפטפטים תמיד בצפצוף קול So he says, if you accept the Midrash that Sarah comes because of לשון הרע speaking bad about other people, yes, right? Yes, so that is chattering, chattering speaking so you bring birds which also chip 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 they chipper Chipping. they cheap chip chip how do you say chip cheap um, uh, in in Spanish birds do what um, I don't I don't know the word no in no, Spanish there's no, no such word um, no I don't remember the word because here they say <laughs> chatter birds tweet birds chatter maybe even chatter what's the other word birds make 
It's like a chipping, but it's not chipping. It's a um, word. There's a Spanish word. I yeah. Think. <laughs> anyway, why, why you see you've been here? Oh, yeah, it's from Spain, from Spanish. You're Greek, you're you're country for so long. You're acculturated to the American. You're you're my language. You become an American. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but but how? Why did you tell the judge? Why did the yes. Ramban assume <laughs> that the birds are just chattering? Just like why do you compare it to Lashon Hara? No, it just it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not fair to say that the bird is less saying Lashon Hara. He is bringing a he is bringing a he's bringing he, he's a big korban, lot, maybe no. He's bringing a korban which reminds him. Now he's being purified, right? So he, it's part of the process of his atonement. So he's bringing a bird which reminds him. You know why did I get here in the first place? Why did it start in the first place? Because I said Lashon Hara, and I'm bringing a korban to remind myself that I will never do that again, right? Da, 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 da. Just by association, it's not... The bird doesn't say Lashon Hara. Right? Mm -hmm. Not that we know of. Bird used to talk a lot. Right? They, they, right? Lashon Hara. That's what Rashi says, by the way. Okay? He's quoting Rashi when he says that. It's a medrash. But you remember the Ramban had not... Had not the Ramban did not agree necessarily that Sarad comes from Lashon Hara. It's Rashi who says that, so this works out okay. Mar Tehorot, and because the Torah said pure ones prat of tame instead of any bird which is not clean, clean like a, let's say an eagle or a hawk, Nilmad she'en atziparim min tahor. Give me a second. We learned from that. You said that. So is Rashi that say that Lashon Hara brought Sarah? Brought Sarah. And Ramban say The Ramban no. did not necessarily believe that. He started by saying it was this miraculous thing about being with God in any way. Yeah. Deviating in any way from being with God. But include... In God, good, sure, yes. But, but include, not including, including the... Uh, hitting my child. Including stealing mm -hmm. something. Including mm -hmm. the... Eating something unclean, whatever it doesn't matter to him. Being okay. away from God, yeah. So anyway, so now we are on an aside topic. He's trying to say that at Sipor, since the Torah says Sipor and it says Tehora, Tehorot, Siporim Tehorot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that means there are such things as Siporim that are not Tehorot. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you which Siporim to use. Use the Siporim like that, the Tehorot one. The clean one that you could eat, right? But not tziporim that are not tehorot that you cannot eat. So you just by by definition, you have to say that there's such a thing as a tzipor that is not tahor, that is not right that you don't eat. So this why does that bother him? Why does that bother him? Sheinotem shein tziporim mina tahor. Aval hu shein kol el kol haofot. So tzipor is all the flying. Things, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In Cain, mahu lahem ki ofod rabim eimahem putza pe umitzavtzev. Right? So he's he's bothered by Rashi. He wants to refute Rashi. He says, right? You're bringing birds, which are pure birds, right? Which are that means that every pure bird goes cheap, 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 cheap. Because I know a lot of birds that don't go cheep, 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 cheep. Yes, mute. Right? Like a, like a dove, like a pigeon doesn't go cheep, cheep, cheep. It goes, mmm, mmm, mm, right? Mm -hmm. So, so who, who, he's got a problem with, with Rashi mm -hmm. that way, right? Ve'od ki midrash chayot prat letrefot b'yavo v'machloket. So it's the very idea that Rashi said that chayot, living, means not with a defect that is going to be fatal, that is a matter of of dispute. Whether, in fact, Trefa is can live or is not alive, or is not going to live. That's interesting. There are some people who say that Trefa, a, a, a defect in, a, in an animal that will not cause its death, is also a Trefa. Whether it's even yeah. if it will not cause its death. So it. why do you call chayot is not trefot? Trefa is an animal or bird suffering from one of certain organic disease from which it is bound to die within 12 months, even though it be ritually slaughtered. Quite. Thus, the word living 
excluded excludes, excludes a bird which will die from a disease. So, right. Then go on. Do you, you continue? Where are you reading? Ramba, uh, Ramba, on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah. Now the Ramban though says, Peter on will come in on this point, Isaiah ten fourteen. Okay, okay. And in Holim, we find a difference of opinion, opinion about, about the lies, right? as to whether a trefa animal or bird can we'll in die. fact survive for more than one year. That was my, my question. Right, correct, correct. So you, since there's a difference of opinion about this, the Ramban says you can't you can't accept Rashi's opinion that chayot means not trefot. Because chayot means live, we'll live, right? Yeah, I think we should. We should proceed. So you don't like the halachic portion. Ulaman de Amar Trefa Chaya ain't okay. Uterat Konim Chayot Lo Shuchutot. Tehorot Lo Tmeot. Tehorot Lo Trefot. And so on and so on. Ubale Abshakarim Kikol Ov Yukaret Sipor. Nimasha Amar Tsipor Shamayin with the Geayan. Kol Tsipor Kol Kanaf. Ben Adam Amor Let Tsipor Kol Kanaf. And so on. Vechein Veet Tsipor Lo Batar. Al Torim of Neyona. Vanachon Beinai. Let's let's look at that. And it's in my opinion. Sheshem Tzipor Kalal Leofot Haktanim. He says what when we mean Tzipor, it doesn't mean just every flying creature. It mm -hmm. means small birds. Mm -hmm. Small birds. Hamashkimim Baboker, who get up in the morning with the dawn. Licks mm -hmm. safe to go. Do -do 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 yeah, like a like a nightingale. Ule shorer milashon aramit safra. How do we know? And they and they and they go cheap cheap cheap. How do we and sing? Mm -hmm. Because there is an Aramaic word that is to sing, and morning, mm -hmm. safra, mm -hmm. safra, right? Safra is morning. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting thing to think that Aramaic is the source for the word sipor. Now, there are a few times in the Torah where Chachamim seem to think that uh, Lashon Kodesh, the, the tongue of the Torah, is somehow related also to other languages, right? But here it would be, according to the Ramban, Sipor comes to the word Safra, which is morning. Mm -hmm. The words that get up in the morning. V'chein Yashuv Ve'yitzpor, which is a pasuk from Shoftim. Inano Yashkim Baboker, a person will get up early in the morning. Yashuv mm Ve'yitzpor. -hmm. Yashkim Baboke. Okay. Amar, Sipor Shamayim, Alehem, Kihem Lerubam Yagbihu Laof Laof Pashamayim. Okay, they fly into the sky. Vechol Sipor Kol Kanaf, Shnei Minim, Kol Ktanim Vechol Kedolim. Ki, Yikare Kan Sipor Lefanecha, Hem Aktanim, Shein Rabim, Shafilu Biktanehem Yachus. Ah. So he says, well, I, that's, a, that's a matter of opinion. I'm not sure how much of a, of a bird watcher he was. Mm -hmm. But he says that birds are usually the small ones. And that's why the Torah says, you know, that mitzvah of Kansipur, when you walk into the field and you see a nest of birds and you want to take the children for yourself or the eggs, you have to go and first wave away the mother, make her fly away from the nest, and then you could take the egg. You cannot take the mother and the egg. You have to let you have to free her first, and then take the egg. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, and there it says kan sipor. It's called a tzipor. Mm -hmm. So he says, according to my opinion, which sipor means a small bird and not a big bird, that would mean that the Torah indicates that it's with small birds that you have this mitzvah of kan sipor. And, and why would that be so? So he suggests that it's the small birds that are many that you would find in the field by walking around, and that small birds are the ones who care for their young. That's opposed to the big ones. That makes, that makes it a little bit peculiar, no? Mm -hmm. He happens to know that uh, flamingos don't take care of their young as much. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I, I don't happen to know. I don't happen to know, right? But he's trying to suggest that, right? Thanksgiving bird. What is this? Uh, let's see, a star here. Oh, the man, the people will become more compassionate for the mothers and the children of small birds. 
I don't know. וכן אשר שם שמתי ציפורים מקננו, כי הם השוכבים, השוכנים בענפי ארזי הלבנון. There's another פסוק in, uh, in our uh, Yerush Chodesh. כבר חינפתי את השם. שם ציפורים מקננו, he's quoting many פסוקים in which ציפור is mentioned, right? So there he's talking about ציפורים who will nest that live in the branches of the tree, and that's a small, bran- a small uh, bird. I don't know. אמור לציפור כל כנף, שיתאספו אפילו הקטנים עליהם, כי הטורפים יבואו מעצמם. Right? Many birds will come, 15, יחזקאל, many birds will come, even little ones will come, because the hunting ones will come by themselves. וכן יתחשק כל בואו כציפור ותשקשרנו לנאורתך, כי דרך הנערים לשחק בעוף הקטן. Children play with little birds, they don't play with big birds. Different mm-hmm. פסוקים, right? לשון חכמים כאן הוא, כי כל שיש בידו מקל או ציפור, האורג משער הנזיר, כמלא, I don't even understand, I don't know where you have to go after one of the, every one of these details, right? ואמר הכתוב, כל ציפור טהורה תאכלו על המינים הרבים מהם, ונתרבה של מצורע, ונתרבה של מצורע מכל. Right, right, right. You could eat, you could eat any tzipor that is kosher, even a bird that was part of the ritual of the Mitzorah. Because you see, you know one of the birds are sent into the field, right? So what happens if that bird is sent into the field and she goes near your house and uh, she makes a nest? So obviously you're allowed to eat her because you'll never know where she came from. So if you have to worry about who it was, even if you know that she came from there, you're allowed, right? There. That's what he says, so right? What about a rabbit? Can you eat a rabbit? Vamar what? Can you eat a rabbit? A rabbit? I don't know if it's a kosher bird. I don't know. They, the birds, just because they're small, are not necessarily kosher. What are you talking about? El, 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 like yeah. a robin, robin with the red breast, yeah. you know, that you see here in the springtime. I don't know, you have to ask. About each bird, they have different... But it's in uh, reference to right? El Yahu? Mm-hmm. They're using the same... No, 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 no. no. Maybe with the Crows. Uh, oh, Helps you, crows, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. But all of them will be working. Vrein gam kein gam tzipor matzah bai to draw kein la. No, the kach nirasha in no shame kolel ha'ofot kulam. It's not all the birds. Tzipor is a particular kind of bird. Vrein asher sham tziporim kaneinu chasidi chasidah broshim beita. You notice tziporim are mentioned and then stork. Hmm. Right? So tziporim are a particular type of bird, does not include, include chasida, which is a big bird. Right? Why is he using two words, tziporot and tziporim? This... Nobody said tziporot. Who said tziporot? The sage also speaks of tziporot. Where? Birds of the vinegar, however small. They also said the meat of tziporim, birds. I don't That's see tziporot. I don't. I don't. I don't see it anyway. Did you see the word tziporot? Tziporot kremi. Yeah. Tziporot. 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 Tziporot kremim. Kremim. No, that's a possessive term. Tzipor of kremim. No, I don't think that tziporot. You don't see tziporot anywhere. It's uh, interesting. His vomru bat besar. Yeah, in Shabbat, in Shabbat 19, uh, the Mishnah there, in a speaking with reference to taking out any object from one domain to another on the Shabbos, mm-hmm. states, For Siporot, birth of the vineyard, whether alive or dead, he is liable, however small the size. Oh, so I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, it's... I don't know why. It's a grammatical... I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. 
don't know why it could be used both. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 wh where are we going with this old thing? Some, it seems from what the rabbis have said, that every One. kosher bird is called a tzipor. It has to be free birds. They've got to be wild birds that don't are not domesticated. These are not birds that are kept, uh, you know, uh, in a pen, in a in a coop, in a chicken coop. They are birds that are fly, that are free free flying birds. The a had drawer, and what do we mean by drawer by free? In a pitput. Drawer means also song. Maybe all birds are actually, you know, in a pinch, are okay. Why are we doing this Ramban? This is a very uh, intricate, halachic Ramban. They have to be equal, the two birds that are brought, they have to be identical, and bought, let's say, at the same time. Um... species if you want to find it's not truly a wild a wild bird so take get another one you know what I mean? another, another pair another another pair or another uh, one one to match I the, think it's a zoom no a zoom no a zoom less than yeah maybe, maybe the other one is good okay but you have to get one they have to be bought at the same time so oh, that's all right oh, oh, that's true. Uh, uh, so I don't know, I guess, um, apparently, uh, you found you short you found it was not proper species, you saw the other one Therefore, you have to get a little pair. I think, I don't know, but I guess we can skip. We learn a lot of support by that. <laughs> there is another issue that maybe... This is really, I mean... Uh, yeah, it's very I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, maybe he's going to get... get the, uh, what is it? it's, it's basically the bottom line is coming up at the end where he says, 
You're talking about like, you, you see somewhere over here. But what comes out of all of this, the Koze, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 מתחילה אמר הרמב"ן על חד, ענקתו חז"ל בשיטות שהם מצפצפים ומפרטים, וזה רוצה להוכיח ששם סיפור הוא קטנים מעוניינים על השחר, בין טמאים בין טהורים, לכן הוא ראה את אחר כך מוסיף, תהקתה היא קשה, דילמה יצטרך למה את טמאות, והלא חז"ל דרשו מאייר ודרור. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is very yeah. intricate. He has a whole page of footnote along. Um, if you, I mean, his suggestion was Hatam Lahabat Korban Amitayeritzarato. Why does he bring a korban? If you go to Pasuk Yud Chet, so this coming page. Itain al Rosh Hamitayru Chipper Alav Akoyen Lipnei Hashem. You notice that, right? You check one and you dip its blood. You dip everything else in its blood. You notice that? So you see that Yud Chet, eighteen. Sorry. Yes, and the rest of the oil that is in the priest. And he shall put upon the oil that he puts on his head, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. And he says, "B'maaseh dam Hashem ba'Hashem and Tiyah kapara azot." This is with the blood of the Hashem of the sin offering and the shemen, the oil. This <coughs> atonement or this cleansing is done. V'chein lechaper alav lifnei Hashem, and this is to what to, to forty nine. Remember, lechaper is a very interesting word for the Ramban. To somehow prepare him to come before God, okay? Uvitora konim in in vayikra the hanotar b'shem and asher al kapa koin yitain al rosh amita heber chiper. If when when he takes the oil that is left over in his hands, he put it on his head hmm. and chiper, and that atones for him. Hmm. So the the Torah's konim, the medrash chazal on the the the, the rabbis say im natan chiper. If he took the oil and he put it on his head, then he becomes mechupar, he becomes cleansed. Even if the korban is brought, if he did not take the oil and put it on his head, he is not completed. Diver Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says that. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri Amar, Shiare mitzvahem, ben shenatan ben shalonatan kiper. The truth is, no, this is the leftover of the mitzvah. The mitzvah is actually the sacrifice and the bringing of the korban and the shemen on the mincha, and the leftover the leftover oil that's in the coin's hand, he puts on his head, but even if he doesn't put it on his head, the korban is done, and he is atoned, he's cleansed. There's a dispute between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Akiva says it's an absolute requirement, and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says it's the ed, it's the leftovers of the mitzvah, whatever that means. Vim Kain, al that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, hi yihiyeh v'chiper alav, Al Hashem, he trained Al Rosh Hamitaher v'chiper alav akohen l'fnei Hashem. V'chiper alav meaning on the korban, not on him, not on the man, according to Rabbi Yochanan Minuri, because it's not required that he put it on his head. Absolutely. V'nei Amar katu ba Hashem v'chiper. After all, it already said about the Hashem that he was mechaper, so now it must be about the. About the mitzora, the Chazar Ramar v'tamar v'chatat v'chiper ala mitaher miturat mitumato. He's talking about the mitzora when he says about the kapara. Ramar od biul beola uveminchah v'chiper ala v'koyin v'taher, meaning the man. The lo yadanu ma'in yana kaparot alalu kulam. What what is all these? What are all these kaparot kaparot kaparot? It says. It with the ola. It says it with the asham. It says it with the mincha. And and it all suggests that it's on the man. And why is it repeated so many times? First, he's asking. What, what, what were all these kabbalas brought in this? Case? By the Torah, by the Torah. Oh, okay. So therefore, therefore, mm -hmm. you see, he's he's quoting one pasuk after another. Pasuk yutet, pasuk chaf, 
and so on and so on. Okay, so therefore, what is, why is it repeated so many times? Ulai ha'asham, now he's trying to tell you the philosophy, right? Ulai ha'asham yechaper al ma'alo asher ma'al kodamigo. Okay, asham, his sin offering, is, it needs kapara, kapara meaning somehow allowing him to be before God, right? To get him, uh, to get him back to his original state, kapara. What is this about through the sin offering that's brought? It is because of the things that he did wrong before he became a Mitzora. What caused the Tzarat? Some misdeed. Some misdeed. So he brings the Hasham for that. Ve'achatat, and the other sin offering, al cheto asher chata b'yemei Woo! The sin, the true misdeeds that he did at the time, during, while he was a Mitzora. What could he possibly have done when he was a Mitzora already? I mean, I, I, you would think he's sitting out out of the camp. What's he doing wrong? So the, the Ramban suggests, Ulai bitsa'aro natan tfila ulai Elohim. Tifla. Meaning, natan tifla Elohim. Maybe while he was Mitzora, he said, Ay, you know, God damn it, why did this happen to happen to me? You know I mean, why does God do this to me? Why? You know, he's, he's angry at God. You know what I mean? So, he had one sin that brought about the tzarat. Mm -hmm. And then when he got the tzarat, instead of saying, God is trying to show me a sign, I'm supposed to correct myself, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he well, had a lot of rebellious complaints about God doing this to him. So the chatat comes, the asham comes for the one before, the chatat comes for the one during. And is it that the tefillah and the tefillah have the same? I don't know. V'zeh tam mitum ato. Because the first one says, V'chiper alav, akohen. And the second one, the chatat says, V'chiper mitumato, from his uncleanliness, which is during the uncleanliness, the sin that he did during. You know what I mean? In other words, that's why he's suggesting that the word on chatat is mitumato, from his uncleanliness, he is mechaper. So he's saying, from the sin during the uncleanliness, he's mechaper. From those words, mitumato. Ola, and now there's another thing that he brings. He brings an ola too. An ola is a sacrifice that is offered completely on the on the sacrificial altar, and the mincha, which is a grain, you know, flour offering. Mm -hmm. Those two, it says also the chaper. So if we did a kapara on the sin before, and we did a kapara on the sin after, what more does he have to be? What what other sins are there, right? Before and after, two two periods of time. What else is there? So he says ola mincha you look low. Kofer nefesh yiskeh litahir v'lashuv v'lohah. Do you remember? Do you remember? Oh, hello. Do you remember we talked about kapara, kofer for the Ramban? Yeah, a long discussion about that. Based on, what was the first time in the Torah that kofer, kapara is mentioned? A kapra panav. Who said it when? Who said Who said it? Okay. No, who said it? Achara kapra panav. Who said it to whom? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, Yaakov. Yaakov said it to Esau, wait. right? And we talked about this, remember? La kapra panav. Let me, let me, what should I say, ransom my life to be able to be worthy of standing in front of you. Sort of like I'm offering something instead of my life, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? Remember that we discussed? So it's not sin. Not sin. Because the Ramban wants to be sure that you don't misunderstand it wasn't Yaakov saying to Esau, I am wrong, I am a sinner, and you're the, and you're the righteous one. That's not what he was saying. He's still insisting he is the one who has the Bechorah and so on. Yes? But you're, my, you're an old brother. I want to show you great honor. I'm sending Kofer Nefesh to stand before you. You're such an important person. I'm, I'm, I'm buying a ticket so to stand in front of you. Right? Isn't that the case? Right? And if you remember, that's what the Ramban wanted to say was the explanation for the Kapara that the woman who is pregnant and has a baby has to bring a chatat. What? Le chaper. What do you mean le chaper? What, what sin did she do? So he quoted the chachamim who said maybe she swore not to go oh, to her husband. Anymore. But he did not agree with that. He did not agree with that because that's not a vow anyway. It never is a vow. He wanted to say maybe according to those rabbis, Hashem is doing her a favor because she feels guilty so we will allow her to bring. That's the rabbis. But I, the Ramban said, she was in the state of danger. 
She almost died, could have died when she was giving birth because of the placenta business. Remember, we talked about all this last time. And therefore, she feels that she has to thank God for her very life. And so she brings, well, the Torah gives her the opportunity to bring these two birds and to bring an offering which is like showing that she is atoning for her life. It's not sin. It's not sin, right? So now, here, he's using the same words. The Ola and the Mincha, which is not for sin, but it's a, he's bringing an Ola which is burnt completely before God, right? And the Mincha is grain which is burnt on the, on the, on the altar as well, right? Um, those things are like his, he is now finished with this disease, He's coming back to the camp, to his tent, and he wants to show God great uh, gratitude that he's, his life is saved, his normal life is brought back, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kapara also. That's kofir. From the word kofir, kapara. Kofir is a ransom, right? Mm -hmm. So you see, according to the Ramban, there is uh, an interchangeable, delicate difference between using kapara as atonement, which is removing sin and kofair which is showing gratitude for one's own life to, to sort of giving some kind of a ransom for your very life and you have to be careful what when you use what so the Ramban here in the same psukim when he brings an asham it's a kapara for the sin before the, 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 the tzarat when you bring a chatat it's for a sin that he did after the tzarat an ola and a mincha he's bringing to show his gratitude for his very life. Yeah, and the yeah. same word, kapara, is used for all four of them. Mm -hmm. By um, injury, when a person injures somebody else, um, well, as opposed to killing the person, um, uh, money is a kapara for... Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Is a kapara for an arm, a leg, You, see, you use it? Yeah, yeah. It's used, that it's word? Like that word is used? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Uh. And, uh, and I thought whereas, we were whereas, this, uh, whereas um, life is no kapara except his, his own life. Lo yuchupar la la meglo yuchupar kim kim b'dam shofar. Now that's paying for. That doesn't mean atonement. That means paying for the life. Right? That's like ransoming for the life. We are exchanging right. that person's life for yours. Right. We're taking your we're life we're in exchange for what you did. We're so at, it's not an atonement, sounds like. Whereas if we're arm or leg, there you are money, permitted money. to use but, that. But this is must, must to pay because of, of the damage. Um, in this case, it's no must. It's like a... says, I am takasai. An eye for an eye. People mm -hmm. make a mistake and they think the Torah really, really means an eye for an eye. But yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mama, mama. It's, it's, it's exchange. Have to yeah. pay money. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So therefore, by the way, about the Ola and the Mincha, he's saying that's why the Torah says v'chiper alav v'taher hakohen v'taher. It doesn't say v'chiper alav hakohen v'nislach, and he's forgiven. Right? With, the, with regard to the Ola, it doesn't say ben, nislach, that he's forgiven. It says v'chit v'taher, and he's cleansed. That's why he's bringing the Mincha and the Ola. There's a fantastic Ramban that's in the string of ideas that he has about Koper, about Kapara, right? And so you have the Yuledet, and you have the Mitzora, and you have Yaakov. In this string of Koper, meaning ransom, showing that I'm giving up my life almost, back, back to you, I'm showing my gratitude, giving, right? It's maybe. a very interesting theme in the Ramadan, maybe, right? Maybe, on the Teva also. On the Teva. Oh, you said, that's right, your idea about Kofi Rakivik. By the way, I, made, I spoke about this at the Shabbos table. My sister Ora was there, and I said, "Listen, could you tell me where in the Torah does it stir first say kapara, kapara?" And she said, "Oh, when the teva kofar." I said, really? "Oh, did you speak to Ora?" Oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> sister Ora, my sister Ora. Yeah. Wow, my younger sister, my baby sister, said that. Yeah, very good. Okay, we go on now. Yeah, ubatorah kohanim. 
ועשה הכהן את החטאת וכיפר, מה תלמוד לומר? לפי שנאמר והעלה הכהן את העולה ואת המנחה, מזבחה, יכול להיו כולם מעכבים אותו, תלמוד לומר ועשה הכהן את החטאת וכיפר, מלמד שכפרה תלויה בחטאת. That sounds different, right? You notice what, what he says? He quoting the Chachamim who say that after giving the, 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 the Ola and the Mincha which come first, it then says he brings the Chatat and is Mechupar. So the Torah Konim, the Chachamim there said, you might have thought that once he brought the Ola and the Chatat and the Mincha, he's already got it. So he says, no, the, all of the, the Kapara is uh, dependent on the Chatat. Well, the Ramban has said that each one of them is different, has a different role. וייתכן כי וחיפר עליו הכהן וטהר רמז לכל הנעשה בו כי גם הציפורים יבואו לכפרה ולתרה כי כן אמר בנגע הבית וחיפר על הבית וטהר. Alright, I don't know what he, I don't know how he gets away from that problem, but he insists that all of them have their own meaning, right? What is he trying to say here? Because it says וחיפר עליו הכהן וטהר, where is that? I think so. No? Because it sounds like they say you would think that each one of them is required. It's the Chatat. And he had said before the Asham is for one sin. And the Chatat has its own place, and the Ola and the Ola and the and Mincha and the Ola is another place. So it, it, it disagreed with the Torah Skonim, who say that the, the pinnacle, the important thing that's achieved is for Chatat. Right? So he's trying to answer that. V'yitachin ki chiper alav ha-kohen v'tahir is... Remez. Remez. שנאמר בעולה ובמנחה. או בואי. רמז כל הנעשה בו. He's trying to say that maybe when it says עולה ומנחה וחיפר includes all the things that are done by the Tziporim also, and so on and so on. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to say, why that is so. But it, he he seems to brush aside the, somehow, the statement of the Torah's guardian. But, you, but I never heard it said by anybody, right? That there, there are four different korbanot that they bring, right? He mm-hmm. brings an asham, he brings a chatat, he brings an ola, he brings a mincha. And with each one of them it says, V'chiper. V'chiper. And the Ramban is trying to explain that each one of them has a specific meaning, a specific role. Although he didn't say make a difference between the Mincha and the Ola, right? They're, they seem to be somehow grouped mm-hmm. together in terms of Kofir Nefesh, right? Those two. Mm-hmm. But Chatat is for something he would have possibly done during his Tzarat. And the Asham is before the Tzarat. And the Mincha and Ola are not sin at all, it is gratitude, like with, with all my life I give you back, something like that, right? For what you have done, you've restored my life. Mm-hmm. He really, basically, um, it's over the base. Right, which, which that, that's what he means to say, Bechiper, Betaher, Beba, and he returns to his tent, meaning he's, he's like, come back to life. Mm-hmm. Like he's come back to life, like the Yeladet, which he said was that kind of feeling, like the one who gives birth to a child, like that kind of feeling. I'm, I'm restored. I could have died. I was in danger. I was in limbo. Here I am. Mm-hmm. I'm back. Not yet. But that's different as a, a, a shalom offering. Shlamim? Shlamim is different, that's right. Shlamim is, is, is thanksgiving. Just uh, gratitude. Yeah, I don't know why. There's no kapara in Shlamim, right? Korban Toda. Mm-hmm. His question is, Korban Toda, a person who, who was uh, among those who benches Gomel, 
you might have thought that he would be the one Dafka who would feel this kapara, kofar nefesh idea. You understand his question? Um, and he's bringing a korban toda. I mean, he, 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 his life was in danger. And, and he's saved, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes mm -hmm. back and he does a korban shlamim, korban toda. Right? And a korban toda doesn't say kapara about but where it. Did, where, did, where, did, where did the Torah talk about the, uh, Benjamin Gomel, or oh, oh, not about Benjamin Gomel, but but uh, it is understood that the korban toda korbano in um, the, Ch the Chachamim oh, oh, he, he declared oh, that that korban to korbano to korbano korban toda is oh. brought by a person who has come near yeah. near, 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 near yeah a person who was lost in the desert and mm -hmm. was thirsty and almost died a person who was a stormy seas and almost uh, the ship almost sank a person who you know that uh, from from the to the ones that uh, are described familiar with and the Chachamim describe the korban toda that is mentioned in, in Parshas Vayikra is that person. And he's the one, if you remember my talk, he's the one who has a mincha that is chametz. Which Judy, my wife, explained. You there? I was there. You were there? Yeah, which Judy, my wife, explained that uh, there it's the life that is given to you is not just to bring back, but to bring your life to some kind of fruition, to grow. Mm -hmm. It's not just to bring back. It's like money that Hashem gave you. You know, you, you show him that everything I have is from you. So you give it back to God, so to speak, right? But he gave you life. He gave you your mind. He gave you the Torah. Those are the exceptions to the rule that uh, ask you to bring not chametz, just as God given you, but a process to make it rise. Mm -hmm. That was her chidush. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... Always nice to quote uh, Judy Kim's. But, uh, so his question is, how come we don't have kofair in the Korban Toda it's as an expression mm -hmm. of this idea that you gave me back my life? Mm -hmm. Is there a kofair in the Same Korban thing Toda? that the mother after giving birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your question is a, is a great question. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. In Korban, Tzadar Korbano, where is that? It's a very good question. I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask. And I will ask it in your name. If, I, if I get... Ah, it's, um, it's in uh, Perik Vav, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 7, Pasuk 11. Yeah, the Torah? Chapter 7. Zion. You see it? 7-11. 7 like the store. store. Yeah, you see it? <laughs> yeah. Can you get it? Yeah. In the Torah, 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 not Torah. So Torah is in the Hashemim. Hashem is in the Im al toda yakrivenu vikriv al zevach toda chalot matzot blulot b'shemen. That these are the chal matzot, right? He brings two kinds of bread, right? Chalot matzot matzot blulot b'shemen urukike matzot mishuchim b'shemen v'soolet mur bechet chalot. Blulot Bashaman, these are different kinds of minchas that are breads which are not chametz, which are, right? There are boiled ones, there are fried ones, and there are whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, Al chalot lechem chametz, you notice he brings also chametz bread, that one plur, per, that one type. Yakriv korbano, al zebach todat shlamav, vikriv mimenu echad, nikol korban. Shuma la donai la kohen hazoreik et dam hashlamim lo yihye ubesar zevach toda hashlama biyom korbano yeyachel lo yaniach mimenu ad boker. Period. No kofer. And it's this. I mean, the Torah doesn't say this is about the man who is about to lose his life. You're, you're correct about that. It doesn't say that. It says korban toda. But I'm saying toda is mentioned, and by Chazal, by the Chachamim, 
as this kind of korban because of the Tehilim, Psukim, that talked about Yodeh Lashem Barabim, da da, you know, he will, he, the word Toda, to thank in Rabim is mentioned in that Tehilim about the people whose lives are almost uh, lost. And therefore they say this Korban Toda is that, is brought by that kind of a person. So your question on the Ramban is, if you are right that a person who's almost lost his life and brings a Korban should bring one that has Kofair in it, the word Kapara in it, from the word of Kofair, how come it isn't in Korban Toda? Brilliant question. It would fall, call into question, according to the Ramban, the Chazal's indication that this Korban Toda is for that kind of a person. If I just told you it was for somebody to thank that he got a good job, it would be fine. Yeah. There's no Kofar, right? But if you want to narrow it, this Korban Toda, to that kind of a person, then his question is perfect. Why doesn't it say Kofar? You have to ask the rabbi. Okay. Is it nine o'clock? Yeah, so it is nine o'clock. Yeah, we, we barked up a difficult tree at one point. Yeah. But this idea of the Ramban on different kinds of chatat, different kinds of kofi, right. kapara, that is, kofi. is a very interesting uh, continuation of something we discussed before. And your question is a good question. That's we, do you think maybe if we go down the rabbi will finish already with this talk? Definitely. Not quite. Then we could ask him. Because I hear the women chattering like yeah, birds. Like, like a bird. bird. <laughs> Therefore, maybe that means that he's finished. Maybe not. Maybe they're just chattering.